The Creatives with AI Podcast. The spiritual home of creatives curious about AI and its role in their future. Hello, welcome to Creatives with AI. I'm your host, David. And on today's show, we've got something a little bit different. And I just wanted to give a bit of an intro before we get started. Um, last week, I was at the Podcast Awards. I did loads of sort of on-the-spot interviews with different people around the show, some people I know, some people I don't. And I wanted to get a feel from the creatives at the show, what they felt about AI, were they using it, and how they thought it might impact the industry in the future. And so that's what today's episode is. So I've split it up into th essentially three questions, which is just introduce yourself, tell us who you are, where you work, and then are you using AI in your daily life and in your work? And if so, what are you doing with it? And then the last question was just, where do you see AI going in the next sort of several years, three to five years, that kind of thing. I've taken, we did loads of interviews and I've taken the best ones and just pulled them together um, into just one single show. So that's how it's broken up. So it's just everybody introducing themselves and then we go into the first question and the second question. So hopefully you'll enjoy this. It was a really interesting selection of people and, and a, I tried to get a wide variety of opinions as well. Um, but there we go. So next week we'll be back to sort of the more normal interview format that we've done in the past. But let me know if you like this format and if you like me sort of getting away from the from the computer and actually going out and talking to people in person and doing more of this style thing, or if you prefer the interview bit. Um, I'm just curious to know what you guys think and uh, let me know. The best place is probably LinkedIn. Um, that's where we do most of our activity. So anyway, enough chat, on with the show. Well, hello everybody. Um, we're here with... Mike Russell. And it, Isabella Russell. And what do you do? Uh, I am originally an audio producer and then a podcast producer, audio guy, and now I'm an AI guy. I think I'm real. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm uh, business brains, I guess, behind Music Radio Creative. We are the largest professional voice over agency. We edit podcasts and we also create amazing intros and outros and everything in between, I guess. <laughs> And for everybody out there, they did all of the sound engineering for the podcast for me in the beginning and the trailer that you hear at the beginning of the show and at the end of the show as well. So uh, they're well known to the and friendly to the podcast. Uh, My name is Kendall Brightman and I am the community manager at Riverside FM. And um, can you give us your name and what you do? I'm Matt and I'm a podcast producer in easy, simple terms. Excellent. Yeah, really good. Hey. You ready? Um, so. Tell us your name and what you do. Oh, so my name is Jai Williams. Yep. Uh, we're Voice of Sound Recording Studio in Soho. And we provide a one-stop shop for recording, uh, editing for broadcasts, podcasts, and uh, theater, film, and radio. Brilliant. And so you... tell us your name and what you do. I'm Zara. I'm the founder of Chopper Tea. We do AI video editing for short videos. So tell us your name and what you do. My name is Fiona Fraser. I'm director of Power PR. Okay. Can you tell us your name and what you do? Yeah, sure. My name's Katie. Um, I'm a general freelancer in audio, but I'm here today because I work for the Radio Academy, um, which is a UK charity for the whole of the audio and radio industry. Right. Hello. Can you tell us your name and what you do? Yeah, sure. Uh, I'm Frank. I work at Spreaker. I mainly work with advertisers. I mean, I help them invest their ad dollars wisely into podcast advertising. Okay, so can you introduce yourselves, please, and tell us what you do? I'm Sangeeta Pillai. I run Masala Podcast, which is the top South Asian feminist podcast. I'm also a governor of the Podcast Academy, which is why I'm here with Michelle. So that's what I do. Brilliant. I'm Michelle Cobb. I'm executive director of the Podcast Academy, which is a membership organization, and we do the AMBI Awards. Excellent. Brilliant. Can you guys, I'm just going around today and just asking people how they're using AI in their businesses. Mm -hmm. I don't know who wants to go first. I'll go first. Go okay. First. I'm really excited. So uh, do you know what? My favorite use of AI actually on this stand is this. So look at this. We do beautiful uh, merch with AI. So this is Mid Journey, and I absolutely love Mid Journey. If you go to our website, actually, every single image in there is from Mid Journey, and people always comment and say, "Oh my gosh, who designed it?" And I'm like, 
me. <laughs> Surely it counts if I'm the the prompt engineer behind it. So yeah, I love it. Like, so Mid Journey for me is a must. Um, I use it all the time, and I'm very proud to say I don't use Chat GPT for prompt engineering. I do it myself. There you go. <laughs> there you go. And for me, I'm using AI in a multitude of ways. I love voice cloning, so I've cloned my voice with Eleven Labs. I'm also thinking that I'd like to make a synthetic avatar of myself. I actually teach it on my channel, Creator Magic. I delve into the tools that content creators can use, and it's just a really exciting space. Just like Isabella, I use Mid Journey for thumbnail design, so I'll make something in Mid Journey, then I'll do a face swap and put my face on the thumbnail, and then I use a bit of Adobe Express to do the text and things like that. So just any tool, and I love things that are new and shiny, so I'm always looking for the next exciting AI tool. Brilliant. And, and Kendall, do you use AI regularly? Yes, I do. Oh, yes, I do. <laughs> uh, almost daily. Yeah. Go on. Um, yeah, so because I'm using Riverside, uh, we have a ton of AI tools built into it. So I'm using AI almost daily, when it, whether it's recording, transcripts, show notes, everything like that. And what do you find, what do you like the most about it? I like the most about AI is that you're able to do a lot more in less time. So you're able to really like streamline what you're doing and also kind of offload what you don't want to do. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what I love about AI. And what do you not like about it? I think what I, the thing that I don't like about AI is that I think that sometimes it's missing a human factor in the way that if I ask it to make something like a social post, it'll say something like level up your social post with, yeah. you know, and it kind of, it can be a little bit robotic. I know you can train them to speak more in your voice, but I think that that takes a little bit of time in the like time in the beginning to really pay off later yeah. you know you have to train it yeah that can take time that's true yeah and so when you're trying to streamline something when you love ai because it streamlines your time the idea of training it can feel counterintuitive yeah yeah no that's fair enough excellent and do you use ai at all in your workflow yeah like every day everything every step of the way i'm using ai i'm using ai to help devise scripts work out um, lines of questioning. I use AI to do research. I use tools like perplexity to allow me to get real time information. Um, recording, not using AI. Although you could say that using uh, some of the teleprompter functionality that has AI in it. Uh, and then post-production, I'm using audio restoration tools all the time. I'm using editing, supporting tools like Autopod that help me change camera angles. Um, it uses workflows to help create social content as well. And then yeah, show notes and aggregating data after it. Yeah. All of it. All of it. Like me. I use all of it. Everything I can use. Yeah. Brilliant. And do you use AI in that workflow at all? Uh, not at the moment. Um, we receive AI uh, when we're doing uh, documentaries, when they do the placeholders where the narration is going to go. Some of that's AI and then it gets replaced. Okay. Uh, for us, I mean, AI voicing is, is as you well know, is a very um, contested area at the moment. Yeah. Uh, we've had to turn some work away because I think that we will lose voice artists. They won't work with us if we, if yeah. we do it. But in other words, I think some tools, audio cleaning, yeah. audio prepping, uh, some of the AI tools that are going to come in for sound engineers are going to be fantastic to, to allow us to uh, our workflow to be faster. And yeah. some of those tools I will use for sure. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's going to help a lot of people who maybe don't have the skill. Yeah. It, it's somebody just said in the last interview, going from zero to one. Yeah. And it's going to help the new people. But the I think there's then getting one to 10 is a whole different thing where we still want the human touch. Absolutely. I agree. I think AI is going to help anyone. The problem is, is how they use the AI. There's always a fear of someone that doesn't know what they're doing using AI. If you don't have the underground skills of editing yeah. and what you're creating, you still need the creative input from the from the professionals. Yeah. But it doesn't mean to say that you can't do it yourself. Of course you can. Yeah. You know, I mean, and I think it's a great tool. It will be a great tool. So it makes them, I would say, a bit more engaging content. Right. I do believe that it will help people to make better content. It will, for sure. Right. Yeah. yeah. And so, so since you're doing AI editing, I assume you're using AI every day? Using AI every day. <laughs> more than I would like to be. <laughs> and how are you finding it? Is it... That's not what I want to ask. Um, how are you using it? How do, how do you use it in your work? I don't actually use it directly in my work. I use it in my products. 
but not directly in my work. Yeah. So Actually, you... that's, that's not even true. I use a lot of a lot of ChatGPT um, so that I don't have to start from blank canvases. I find it really helpful also for reformulating how I've written things. I can speak in a really casual way, which uh, can come across quite unprofessional in a lot of contexts. <laughs> so I get I get ChatGPT to just tidy it up and make things seem a little bit less, um, yeah, familiar. Okay, that's a good use of it. And we were just talking a second ago and you said you had some pretty strong views on AI. So the microphone is yours. It's, uh, yeah, I've actually had some conversations today, quite a lot of conversations around AI, especially um, the podcast show in London where we're at now. There are a lot of companies using AI to help podcasters create content. Um, I work directly with an amazing content creation agency and um, I know the difference between uh, something that's been just created with AI and not. I, the way I see I, AI is, is it's a tool to assist. It's not the end result. So for me, my job is in PR. It's all about relationships. You physically cannot build relationships with AI. So any of the services that I see that are like outreach into this person, that person, it's, it's spam. You don't, you see the email, you know it's AI, you delete the email. My email list is the lifeblood of my company. And I treat all of my emails that I send out with respect or I wouldn't be here now. So I kind of think like, just be careful, be conscious, definitely use to assist. Like, and I'm getting more and more into lot. I've got AI in all sorts of things like around project management, great, perfect. But when it comes to contacting people, when it comes to attracting people, just be aware of that like difference around it does it look fake or not because people do actually know the difference now yeah and it's it's good for workflow automation and those sorts of things right now but yeah the personal contact is not the best we know the difference as humans the, the amount of six signals we pick up now i have part psychology degree so i don't know <laughs> all the ins and outs of it but the signals we pick up from people is around their body language the way they speak the tone of their voice just everything we know instantly if something isn't right and that is the thing with the content and all the big platforms they're starting to penalize people they recognize this content and they're penalizing it so to be honest I, as i've been told today by an expert in their opinion um if you start to post content from ai it just won't go anywhere you'll get no traction at all and you might even start to be penalized as an account that's the, that's the word on the street i don't know if that's true but um i just know that i would never use it to assist me to contact people, build relationships. Um, I'll just use it to help free up my time as much as possible so I can spend more time building relationships. Brilliant. And, where do, Brilliant. and do you use AI in your day-to-day -day job? I I don't think so. When I was just thinking about this, like I, nothing sticks out to me, but I am aware and I have used software in the past that like is powered by AI, like Descript, for example, I've used to edit podcasts and stuff it's not what i my go-to software um but i'm definitely aware of it okay and like no chat gpt or anything like that to sort of help with outlining or anything i i don't use it in my work uh, i've used chat gpt in my personal life just like especially when it was first coming out um it was like fun to play around with but yeah i don't really use it in work and what do you think? I mean, I know this is the Radio Academy. So, what do you, is there? What do you think the Academy? So, I know you can't speak on behalf of the Academy. That's not really what I'm asking. But, um, what's your impression of what people think about AI? I think people think it's very scary, um, and we're kind of on the precipice of something. Like, we don't know where everything's going to go. At our Radio Academy festival last year, we had um, a big speech um, from a great speaker i can't remember his name right now but um, <laughs> you can cut that bit out um who was talking about what ai can be and like what we can use it for in radio and i think everyone was really excited about what he was saying because it's just like all new and shiny um but i can see how everyone can also find it scary and like is it gonna take our jobs is it gonna i don't know like diminish our skill set like we don't need certain people for certain things anymore but yeah, it's interesting. I think there's like, like a lot of mixed feelings about it at the minute. Right. I think it's going to take some people's jobs and some parts of work, and it hopefully will free us up to do some of the more interesting stuff that humans can do, specifically because we're so creative and we're human. Yeah, definitely. I was just talking to my colleague about this earlier. Like, um, 
it makes sense to use AI in some, like, to free us up for some of the, like, more mundane tasks, like, that no one enjoys. Um, so I kind of, I get people using it for that, but I, I have issues when it comes to kind of using it for creative things. I was talking to somebody earlier who was like, oh, we can bash out an advert, like, we can produce a whole advert in one minute. And it's like, oh, that's great, but, like, it means that people aren't, uh, getting voiceover work or like ad advert producers aren't getting that kind of work so it's difficult in an industry that is rely like we rely so much on freelancers to prop up the industry yeah and when that when work dries up for those freelancers I'm, i just wonder how things are going to go yeah me too um and do you use ai in your day-to-day -day job or in your life well, uh, not much really. I just started using a little bit ChatGPT just to write emails for me because I'm a bit lazy as a guy. That's it. And uh, and how do you find it? Is it actually really helpful, or do you find that you have to just end up doing stuff yourself anyway? Definitely helpful. I mean, uh, I had the panel here a uh, podcast show yesterday about programmatic, and honestly, I asked ChatGPT, "Can you can you write uh, what should I say at the panel?" for me and I just repeated exactly what such a pity said. <laughs> Excellent. And so do you use, you've got two different perspectives here, which is amazing. So how do you use, or do you use AI in your workflow and how's, how does that work for you? So I, so I tried using AI, the basic of chat GPT, um, but I didn't really like it. So I'm a writer fundamentally, right. I identify as a writer. And I got sick of the 10th time it said deep dive into something. And I'm like, that is not what I sound like. And I take a lot of pride in what I write. So yeah, yeah. whether it's social media, whether it's a newsletter, whether it's podcast notes, whatever, you know. Yeah. So it didn't really measure up. And I tried doing the training, your AI thing. That didn't work for me either. Oh. The problem, I think, with AI is it's very Western focused. So my podcast is a South Asian podcast, right? And we use... We speak in English, but there's a thing called Hinglish, which is like between in Hindi and English. And we might say a certain thing a certain way. It's very difficult to train AI, which comes from the West, to try and, you know, do that. I'm hoping that there's some sort of Indian company that comes up with something. The other uh, interaction I had with AI was um, there was a translation software that used AI to translate. And last year, I was sitting in a panel exactly here at the podcast show. And someone said, oh, we've translated Spanish and Hindi and whatever. And they played it. At the end of that, they're like, oh, what did you think? And I put my hand up and I said, that Hindi is like Shakespearean English. Like nobody speaks like that anymore. Right. Because your source is whatever you've got it is very decades old, old, decades old. But I think what's good, though, I've just had um, a conversation with somebody else. I forget their wonder something. And they do translations. And I heard the Hindi one, and that's a lot better. It's a lot more spoken. You know, how you speak is very different, right? And it's using language that's off now rather than 60 years old, you know. It's kind of like Pi, because I don't know if you've used Pi, uh, the AI tool. No. But the difference between Pi and, and say, an, uh, like a chat GPT yes. is that Pi was trained using audio and video. Yeah. So it's... The way it speaks is more like a human would speak instead like of being that. trained on academic text. Yes. Like oh, that's so text. interesting. I didn't know that. So it depends on the set that you used. To yeah. Train. So maybe that Hindi tool was used on training. Yeah. Like recordings and yes. sort of thing that had been transcribed. And yeah. And then you get the video and the audio. Yeah. And you get the yeah kind of yeah yeah yeah. That goes Wondercraft. I just remembered what the name of Wondercraft. Was. Okay, great. That's that was a lot better. Idea. Yeah, that great. was a lot. I heard it and I was expecting it to be like, oh my god, here we go again. Yeah. But actually, it was really really good. Brilliant. So that was good. Brilliant. So I've used AI in a couple of different ways in terms of scheduling. So my email system sends me like, oh, you should follow up. Turns out I'm pretty good at that. So I'm usually like, oh, I've done that. But that's a nice prompt. Uh, I will sometimes use it if I have to write marketing copy just as a prompt to say, okay, this is giving me some thoughts and then I can write it. So it, it just kind of helps as a tool. That's the way I've mostly used it. And uh, in terms of asking questions, it is good for academic texts. If you're like, what happened in the war of 1812? It can write you a nice summary. If I just need like a really quick answer on something like that. Brilliant.
just one more question, just quickly. Where do you think we're going to be in the next five years with AI and how it's going to impact the creative industries? Do you know what? It, it, it actually scares me a little bit because just think of how far we've gone over the past two years alone. Five years seems like the whole decade in terms, well, actually two, three decades in terms of how fast AI is going. So um, I just, my hope is that creativity will prevail in the sense that uh, we we will still value the, the real human creations uh, as much as we still, we still do. And I, I hope that AI will just aid us, maybe make us, a little bit faster at things, but it won't replace us entirely. So, yeah, I echo those thoughts really. I think that AI is going to get better and better on an almost exponential curve. So, we're going to see so much change and we will question our existence essentially, I believe. But what I hope we find as creators is meaning in what we do. As long as we can find something we're passionate about and talk about it and use AI to enhance our skills in ways we couldn't imagine. I think that's great. So if for instance, I'm a bad graphic designer now with mid journey and guidance from AI, I can get better at that. And that is the cool thing about AI. I hope it stays that way. I don't know though. <laughs> Brilliant. Thanks guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. And where do you think we're gonna be with AI in like the next five years or so? I think that AI is going to be incorporated in a lot more things that people won't know. So something that I notice here is that people will say, I don't know, like, I don't know much about AI. I don't want to get into it very much, but I'd love to be able to get a transcript when I'm done recording, Right. you know? So I, and they don't realize that that's AI, or I'd love to be able to have show notes written for me. That's AI. Yeah. So I think that it's just going to be continuing to incorporate itself into things that you may or may not even notice that it's being incorporated into. Yeah. So we'll see it more and more. Brilliant. Yeah. Thanks, Anna. Yeah, of course. Bye. And just one, one last quick question. Where do you think we're going to be in say five years? Uh, where are we going to be in five years? The tide is going to rise all ships when it comes to content creation. AI is going to allow people to go from zero to one with minimal friction, like zero friction. There's going to be no excuse. The advent of B-roll technology, uh, video generated by AI is again, it's going to allow people to start that storytelling process really, really quickly. So I think in five years time, it will be synonymous with the ideation process it'll be synonymous with the production process it will just become part of our tool i liken it to spell checking like grammarly right. it's just integrated people don't really worry you know computer or your phone tells you you've spelled that wrong yeah and you don't go ah oh, damn it i want to do it myself right the first time every time it's just going to be so integrated there's gonna be some people to push back but i think in terms of starting content and creating ideas It'll just help everyone get from one to zero. Brilliant. Thanks, Matt. Thank you. And so where do you think we're going to be in the next, say, five years? I don't think we're going to be as far forward as we think we are. I think in the same way that we all worried about computers yeah. from the analog era, I'm showing my age here, yeah. but I remember in the old days that we were like, oh, computers are going to change everything. They have sped things up. They made things better, you know, editing audio. You don't have to splice it with a, with a razor blade anymore. That's right. And it, but it hasn't removed the work. It still has to be done by a computer. It just means that sound engineers are now more computer-based than they are tape-based. And I think AI is going to be the same. I think it's going to be a good tool. I think it will replace some areas. I mean, we've already started to see e-learning. Yeah. You're starting to see that they're not using voice artists anymore. Yeah. So it will change that area. We'll see that we'll see the sounds change a bit, but it's definitely not gonna it's not gonna decimate it in the way I think everyone is fearing. I genuinely don't. No. Like it. Thank you very much. You're more than welcome. Thank you. And where do you think we're gonna be in five years? I mean, I don't even know where we're going to be in six months, let alone <laughs> in five years. Someone came by just before and said that currently uh, in production. Globally, we're using about 1% of the tech that we have researched in the next five years is when the next 99% is going to come out. If you think about how much things have changed in the last year, year and a half, I feel like five years is going to be crazy. Brilliant. Yeah. Thank you. Of course. Thank you. Brilliant. And where do you think we're going to be in the next five years? I mean, next five years, I can't even imagine because I feel that we're... The last year has just been already like there's so much has happened but what i do know i feel is that is the more personal we can be the better that's going to actually be your superpower so use ai as 
to free yourself up to just be in person and having personable conversations, building relationships. Um, because I, I know everyone says about AI taking jobs, but for me, it just means I can actually do more of the work that I like doing and I'm, I'm good at and like people actually care about more from me. Brilliant. Thanks, Fiona. You're welcome. Um, and last question, where do you think we're going to be in, say, five years? I think things will have, like, leveled out, hopefully. I think we're now in a period where it's kind of the Wild West. Like, everyone's like, oh, let's use it for this or let, let's try it out for this. And I think in five years, hopefully, hopefully, we will have kind of worked out when is, like, an appropriate and a, a good time to use AI in our work and when is, like, oh, no, we should go with the human option, like, for this thing. And I, I think we, we will work it out as we go along, just like anything. Brilliant. Thanks, Katie. No worries. Thank you. Excellent. And so where do you think maybe we're going to be with AI in the next five years? I don't know. I just hope I won't lose my job, probably. <laughs> That's fair. Me too. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. And so where do you think we're going to be in the next five years based on what we've seen? I mean, it's only been a year. And it's been crazy. So any ideas where you think that might take us in the future? So I think it's very important, I think, as we develop AI to think about it rather than just go, right, AI, everything's AI. It's amazing. It's amazing. Because I just did a newsletter two weeks ago about the world's first ever AI beauty competition. I don't know if you saw that. So it's already taking you know, women struggle. Like this is what I talk about a lot, feminism, right? Every day we're told our bodies are not thin enough, not this enough, not that enough, right? And then you create an AI, basically a fake body. And now you're telling us to measure up to that. Like that's really not cool. Yeah. And so there's that kind of stuff. And the models that are being used in a lot of advertising campaigns are AI. And it's unrealistic. So you're already adding, you know, what the I think 80% of kids under 12 think their bodies are not good enough. Yeah. I mean, isn't that crazy? It is crazy. So imagine if we build, bring this into the world without really thinking about it. So I think what I'm saying is, I'm not saying it's good or bad. I'm just saying, whatever we develop, I don't know what that is. I'm not an AI expert. We need to think about it yeah. and use it to help us. What Michelle's saying, scheduling, maybe translation, stuff we don't really want to do, rather than say, all human beings are now going to be replaced by AI, you know, which is just rubbish, I think. Have you seen the dub album, the recent? Yes, I thought it was beautiful and I talked about it and I thought it was wonderful. They've done that's, such a good job. Over that's the what we. Decade yeah, or absolutely. Like that sort of campaign. Yeah, absolutely. Beauty, they? Absolutely. And they did a whole thing on AI. I, I think you saw that. Yeah, yeah. That was really good. Yeah. So that's where I think, I hope it goes. Yeah, thank you. I'm seeing AI come into the voice space for audiobooks and podcasts, of yeah. course. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, what I'm starting to see is the negative side, how it can be used to recreate someone's voice and steal the voice also, but also be used in a nefarious manner because you can now create what sounds like a phone call from you to get money, to talk you into doing something, to make a business transaction for you that was not asked for by you. So I do think it's a great tool. And I think that there are some positive uses for it, especially around um, accessibility. But I'm really nervous yeah. that we don't have good guidelines. Mm -hmm. And the way I'm seeing it used more and more often yeah. is in a way that is potentially harmful. Yeah. So. I'm nervous, I guess I would say. <laughs> exactly what I am nervous as well. Yeah. You know, I just feel like we've just, and we do this as human beings. Anything new comes up, right, we're doing this now. Everything old is gone and this is what we're doing. Yeah. I just think we need to be thoughtful. We need to use it to help us, but not let it become our reality. You know, whether that's, you know, imitating people's voices and scamming people or making women feel bad about themselves. Exactly. That's not cool. No, I agree. Thank you very much for your time. Creatives with AI is a proud member of the AI Podcast Network. 